Hello everyone and welcome to my video. So today's video is going to be a plant tour slash show and tell. I started my plant journey um, about a year ago. I don't know what happened. I just like bought one plant and then became really obsessed with acquiring more and learning a bunch about them and especially got obsessed with learning about how to care for plants on YouTube because before I had tried to keep plants alive but I just didn't know anything about plants and didn't think that you had to really know anything about plants in order to water them um, and it wasn't until I went to YouTube for some basic plant care tips that I learned that I had been doing a lot of things wrong and then I kind of became obsessed with like learning about each plant that I got. So I would like go and buy a plant that I didn't know anything about. I would look up what it was and then I would watch like as many videos as possible about that plant. And now after a year I've amassed a pretty big collection. I would say I probably have like 40 plants. The majority of my plants are housed in my room because my room gets the best light in this apartment. And then the rest of the plants are pretty much in the living room, which is northeast, northwest uh, window exposure. My room is a western light exposure. And then sadly, this apartment doesn't have any southern light coming in at all, which is really a bummer, but it's okay. It's just, it is what it is. I'm just gonna take you around a little bit and we'll get started. So up here, above my dresser, I have a few plants, and I'll take them down and show them to you in more detail. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a view, and then I have um, a hanging plant over here. The first plant on my dresser is a Pilea peperomioides, and I got this plant in my neighborhood. There's a lot of flower shops in my neighborhood, so... I'll just like walk down the avenue and if I see something that I don't have yet or that catches my eye, I'll just pick it up and usually they're pretty affordable. I think this plant was like $7. I had a hard time with it when I first got it and I've sort of just accepted that this is like how it looks now. Um, it's never given me any babies like other people say that their you know, pileas have. Um, so it's gotten really long and sort of like lost some of the bottom leaves and it's gonna get um, really tall but I just sort of water it when it starts to droop and it's been fine maybe it needs more light um, I don't really know but for now it looks fine to me the following plant is this beautiful Scandaptus pictus exotica I think is the one with the larger leaves there's a lot of plants that look like this um, but this one is the one with the really big leaves and it's a little bit more of a slow grower. This is the only like plant in that line of plants that I have and it was actually given to me by a friend who gave me like basically her entire plant collection when she moved out of New York. So I've been babying this one. It's a little like bald in the top. I think maybe what I should do is add like propagate a few of the stems and fill it back out. I really love how big these leaves are and how silvery they are and she's in this nice little red pot and just like trails down the side of my dresser and sometimes gets caught in my dresser if I'm not careful. My next plant is this Monstera adansonia. I know there's two types of adansonia. I don't really know the difference. I look at pictures and I still can't really figure out what the difference is. So I don't know which one this is. I got it from Steve's Leaves, which is a nursery um, slash like plant website that does delivery. And when I got it, it was really small and it's really like grown. I think that I need to repot it um, and move it into a bigger pot because this, this guy is really trailing out. So I think I'm gonna try and like propagate it and fill the pot a little bit more. But yeah, it grows really quickly. I think it's really happy where I have it. This is actually the plant that got me into my plant obsession. It is a Nepenthes. I don't know exactly the, the exact name, but it's a pitcher plant. Basically, it's a carnivorous plant that has these pitchers. 
It has dropped all of its pictures since last summer. It had a bunch when I got it last summer. And I'm hoping that it grows more pictures, but I don't really know what I need to do in order to ensure that. I think I saw like a little baby picture in like in here. I see it actually, I'll, I'll um, zoom you into it. There she is. So this was the first plant that I got and I found it just walking around in my neighborhood. It was outside of one of the flower shops. I paid $30 for it. And I really thought that I was going to kill it. I was just so obsessed with it. I thought it was so beautiful. And it really is, even without the pictures. I love like how massive it is. It needs a drink right now. And I was really worried I was going to kill it because it's sort of known to be a finicky plant. Like, it really likes distilled water. It needs like a decent amount of light. And it wants to be wet pretty much all the time. But I actually can go a pretty long time without watering this plant. And it seems to do fine. Yes, this was the first plant that really got me feeling plants and sort of launched me into researching plants and then realizing there were all these other plants and all these people on the internet that knew about plants so pretty cool. These are going to be a little backlit so I will pull them out but I have just a couple plants on my windowsill. On my windowsill I have this beautiful chef flara and it's actually a plant that I don't see that often like talked about on YouTube or it doesn't really seem like a very coveted plant but I don't know why because it's so unusual and it has like such a crazy shape to it and I, I really love like the variegation on it as well so yeah this plant has been like chilling pretty happy in my apartment. I have no idea what this plant is called but I will be able to figure it out and put the name in it. It's some sort of like succulent type plant and this is another plant that I got for my friend um, from her apartment and honestly like I don't particularly like succulents that much or cacti unless they're really really unique so this one I've just been sort of like keeping alive and not paying a lot of attention to and yeah it doesn't really like do that much for me but I'm also like not gonna get rid of it unless maybe I will I'm not to the point where I have so many plants that I need to get rid of plants to make room for new plants so I'm just kind of keeping everything as it is and it gave me like this new little baby which sometimes I worry that the the new baby is a, is a sign that the plant is not doing well and sort of trying to like rescue itself or something but I'm sure someone can let me know what the deal is. Another plant I don't care that much about is this jade and this was another plant that I rescued from my friend's apartment. It was doing really poorly just kind of sitting in this north facing window with like no light um, and jades are succulent so they want a lot of light and honestly when I first brought it home I also stuck it in a window with not that much light because I didn't want to put it in my room because I thought it was kind of ugly and it's really leggy and it's just kind of a weird looking plant I, I don't really care for it but I realized that like I shouldn't just put things where I want to because they're aesthetically pleasing to me. I should consider the plant's needs and where it belongs and you know I'm starting to to like it again and starting to shoot off like a couple of little guys on the side so I have hope for it. I have hope that I can make it beautiful but perhaps this will be one that I end up giving away. This is an aloe that I've had for quite some time and I've definitely gone through many phases with it. I've actually had this aloe for years. This is kind of the only plant that I've had pre my plant obsession. I was sort of underwatering it for a while. I also had it in a window that where it wasn't getting that much light so I moved it into my room last summer and it seems a lot happier. Um, it's not growing like super fast or anything. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong but it it looks good, I like its shape, and um, I like how big it is. I also think that I put it in too big of a pot initially, so, you know, there's a lot of things to consider, but I think it's doing okay right now. I have a couple plants on my desk that I don't really have, like, a real home for, so I'm just gonna show them to you right now until I find, like, a permanent spot for them. So this big guy is my Peperomia. Cubensis and I got this one from Steve's Leaves. It was very small. I think it's one of the first peperomias I ever bought and to be honest I'm not, I know some people really love peperomias. I don't particularly love them. 
I'm not such an avid collector of them. They do worry me a little just because they're prone to like their stems rotting and they're really delicate. This is one of the only plants that I bottom water. Really big, it's really beautiful. I love how much it's grown and I have to figure out where it's gonna go because it kind of keeps toppling over if the wind hits it the wrong way. So I might need to put it in a ceramic pot or split it up or do something with it but I do really like the look of this plant and I love its um its red stems. I actually just got this plant in the mail yesterday. I placed an order from a new greenhouse that I've never ordered from called Gabriella's Plants and I think I heard about it on YouTube. I really like watching unboxing videos on YouTube so I'm very susceptible to that sort of sponsorship and promotion and I've been trying to hold back from buying plants online just because I really wasn't buying plants like all throughout the winter. I was really busy and like not thinking about my plants as much. They all survived, they were fine, but um, something happened again this summer where I was like reignited in my plant love and have been really trying to like get as many as possible but I really need to like slow my roll. Adding like 20 new plants on at once is probably not a good idea and it'll probably overwhelm me and I need to just kind of like acclimate these new plants. So I bought this plant from Gabriella Plants as well as four others and this is an Aglionema Monto Bay and I actually didn't remember buying it. I think I sort of like blacked out when I was uh, online shopping and was pleasantly surprised at how big it was when it showed up. It literally showed up yesterday afternoon. So I love its leaves. I only have one other Aglionema in my living room and it's honestly not doing that well. This is the other window zone with the rest of my plants and I will take these all out and show you what I'm talking about. So this is kind of my shelf that has the most plants and then we've got a few chilling on my windowsill that are super backlit. Some down here and then this big guy. This plant that lives on my windowsill is a croton. I don't know what kind of croton it is. It was a gift from a former roommate. I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to keep a croton alive in my house because I think I mean, I see them more as like outdoor, like garden plants, um, more so than indoor plants, although I know people keep them doing okay. Um, it's kind of lost a lot of leaves on the bottom, but it seems happy and it's giving me new growth and I've gotten in a sunny spot, so. This plant right here is a Ripsalis that I just got walking, I found it at like a random plant store flash florist that I had never been to in my neighborhood and I saw it hanging outside and I was like it's so big. I actually ended up getting it for like 20 bucks which I think is a screaming deal for a hanging plant this size. There's also like, I don't know if this was like accidental or something, but there's also like these weird leaves in here that don't seem related to the Ripsalis at all. I don't think it's, it doesn't look like a, like a flower or anything, so yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on with these like random leaves. They kind of almost look like fern leaves or something. There's two of them in here, but yeah, I love this plant. It's just like so full and kind of looks like a head of hair or something. The last plant on my windowsill is this dogtail cactus. My roommate actually gifted it to me because she thought it would be happier in my room and yeah I think it's really really cute I really like it um, as I said I'm not really into cactus but I love this one because it just looks like really fuzzy and I like how it kind of like drapes a little bit okay this plant this plant and I have been through a real fucking journey together this is a rubber tree ficus elastica and Honestly, I wanted to kill this plant like on purpose so many times so I bought it last summer and I was really really excited about it and I brought it home and it was growing like crazy and I like immediately repotted it and then it just stopped growing. It just wouldn't grow anymore and I thought that like maybe it had 
a bug or something, but it, it wasn't like deteriorating. It just like wasn't growing at all and I was getting really frustrated with it. And eventually I just like stopped caring about it and stopped watering it and just was really neglecting it. And then my roommate came to me and she's like, are you gonna kill this plant? Like, why are you doing that? And so I finally decided to water it, move it into my room, which gets more light. And all of a sudden this summer, it just started sprouting new leaves. So I think from what I have now realized is that rubber trees can go dormant for a while. And I think that it just wasn't in the right conditions. I'm really glad that I didn't kill it on purpose. I'm really happy that it is doing so well now. Um, although some of it's sort of like the last leaves that it grew before it went dormant have kind of, they're kind of like gross and like wrinkled and kind of nasty. So I don't know if I'm gonna cut those off or whatnot, but this is a really nice plant to have if you have enough light for it. I really do think it needs more light than what I was initially giving it. So this plant next to me, which I'll give you a better shot of, is a philodendron lickety split. I literally just moved it into my room yesterday because I think I wasn't giving it enough light. I just wanted it to be in the living room because there was more space for it. I feel like it was a lot fuller when I got it. I also got a screaming deal on this plant. I bought it at a nursery in upstate New York for $15. $15 for a really big plant is like unheard of in New York City because everyone is a plant scammer here and like trying, like plants are really trendy and I think people are more apt to buy house plants, especially in New York because people don't have yards or gardens or front porches or anywhere really to keep these plants other than inside their homes. So, I don't know, there's just like a lot of scammy plant stuff. Like a plant like this in New York City, I feel like would have cost me like at least 65 to like $80, which is ridiculous. But when I got it, it was a lot fuller and I feel like it will be happier in my room. So I'm hoping that that goes well. Up here at the very top of my shelf is this Monstera Deliciosa that I got from Steve's Leaves and I have always wanted a Monstera, but I also didn't want to pay a lot of money for it, so I just kind of jumped on it when I found it at Steve's Leeds, because this really shouldn't be an expensive plant. Like, it grows like a weed. It's been, like, popping out new leaves, like, every single day. I'm actually going to repot it today because this pot is a little small and it keeps toppling over. I'm really excited to have my own Monstera, even though it doesn't have any, what's it called, fenestration yet? This is a Pothos Pearls and Jade, I want to say, and I just got it from Gabriella Plants in the mail yesterday, and I really love its variegation. I thought it was going to be more white than cream. I would say that the variegation is definitely a little more cream, but it is a little unusual, and I had actually never heard of this Pothos, so I decided to pick it up because Pothos in general are really easy, and I feel like I can't go wrong with adding another one to my collection, so we'll see how that one acclimates. Hello, I am back and it is a whole other day. My camera battery died while I was filming and then by the time it was done charging, I couldn't film anymore. So I've been waiting a couple days to start filming again, but we're gonna jump back into it and talk about some plants again. This beauty is a lipstick plant and it's actually blooming right now, if you can see these very beautiful blooms and I think it's referred to as a lipstick plant because its blooms kind of look like little tubes of lipsticks. I don't know, they kind of remind me of like little erections. This plant has actually bloomed for me twice. When I purchased it, it was a pretty small plant. I mean, it still is relatively small. The woman who sold it to me was like, oh, it's probably not gonna bloom for like at least a year. And it, it's, it bloomed like in the middle of winter, and then it's blooming for the second time now, a year since purchasing it. This is my philodendron Brazil, and I really love this plant. This is probably my favorite of my philodendron or pothos just because I think the variegation on it is so cool it's got like this neon green stripe on all the leaves it also just has retained like a really nice shape and has some nice little tendrils this very weird plant 
is very new to my collection. This came in my Gabriella Plants order and it is referred to as an antenna fern. I had never heard about this fern. Um, I just saw it on the website and it looked so weird. Like, it's just such an unusual fern. It kind of feels like it's two plants in one. Like there's this, this tall fern and then these little, this like little fern. But I don't actually know anything about this fern. Maybe I'll um, do a little bit of research afterwards. I've been really getting into ferns lately, even though I think that once I'm out of quarantine, I'm not going to have enough time for ferns anymore. And I've also run into a lot of issues with my ferns because I'm not watering them enough or I'm not, or I'm giving them too much light or whatnot. So we'll see how much, how well this one fares. I don't think that fern lasted even a week in my house pretty much shriveled up and died immediately after I went like one day too long without watering it. So I definitely wouldn't recommend this fern to fern beginners or anyone that wants to fear for their plant's life constantly. This friend is my philodendron birkin and I also got this in my Gabriella plants shipment. And I think this is the plant that I ordered from Gabriella Plants that I'm the most impressed with just because it's so beautiful. And I don't know much about the philodendron birkin. I haven't really branched out into getting some of the more unusual philodendrons. I know people collect really, really rare and expensive ones, and I haven't been super interested in that, but I really loved the sort of lines on the leaves. I'm excited to see what happens with it, and perhaps it'll... Um, sort of open up a new wave of weirder philodendrons for me. This is a Hoya Carnosa. I purchased this Hoya uh, about a year ago. I personally really, really love Hoyas. I love how easy to care for they are. I love the look of the leaves, and I would love to see one flower in person. For how much I like Hoyas, I only have two Hoyas, and both of them are Hoya Carnosas. And I think the issue is I just haven't been able to find mm, rare Hoyas in my area and I haven't even really been able to find any online that have been available to purchase so I don't know I've just I haven't really lucked out with Hoyas but I would love to acquire more. This is a Peperomia Clover from Steve's Leaves, and I believe the Peperomia Clover is unique to Steve's Leaves, but I'm not 100% sure. I was really excited about this plant initially because it was so compact and sort of bushy. Lately it has seemed to kind of get a little bald in the middle and it's gotten really leggy. It looks very different than when I first got it, and that's probably just because of the conditions I have it in, and plants in general change over time as they sort of adjust to your home and your care. So I still have a lot of love for it, but she's definitely a weird, <laughs> a weird plant. I think it's a Calathea Freddy, and it's the only Calathea that I own. I got it from my friend who was moving out of New York, as I mentioned before, and it was like a stump with just a couple of shriveled up leaves and maybe like one new leaf shooting out and I told her that I was going to try and save this plant and I did I was able to save it I'm actually really impressed with how good it looks I was really worried about owning calatheas just because I know they get a lot of browning on the edges they're really sensitive to tap water they need a lot of humidity and so I was just I just haven't really bought any Calatheas because of that, and this one has been doing relatively well. I kind of have it like shoved behind a lot of my other plants, and it's doing fine. I just remember to like keep the soil relatively moist, and I haven't been giving it special water or anything, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how well this plant was able to bounce back like about a year later. I will say I probably won't buy any Calatheas anytime soon just because I'm a little intimidated by them. If I have to change the conditions so much in my house 
that I'm uncomfortable but my plant is comfortable, then I maybe it's just not right for me to have that plant. This plant that is not doing very hot at all <laughs> is a kangaroo fern. I think I was giving it way too much light. It was literally just like sitting on my west facing windowsill. And I don't know why I did that. I think I like someone at the plant shop told me to give it a lot of light and to only water it when the leaves started to droop, which I don't know. I think I was giving it too much white light and I think I was under watering it. So I moved it away from the window and I started watering it a little bit more or as often as I water pretty much my other ferns. It's actually starting to shoot out a bunch of new little fronds and the roots are out here which is also really cool and was part of the reason I really wanted to get a kangaroo paw fern was I was so obsessed with the roots and so you can see some of the little shoots coming out here but so I think I'm gonna be able to get it to bounce back I'm feeling pretty good about the amount of new growth that it's starting to get this is another plant from Gabriella plants and it is a creeping fig and I was just intrigued because I very much enjoy plants that look like they could be in the woods I really love the look of it. I love how like unruly and overgrown it is and I'm gonna try and like trail it up my wall or something. I haven't really found a good place for it yet. I also couldn't really find a lot of information about it online. I'm a little concerned that maybe these plants are either pest magnets or plants that maybe are harder to care for, need a lot of water. I don't, I don't really know. I know that people also use them outside as like a cover plant. So time will tell, we'll see. I think you do have to keep this plant pretty moist, so I'm gonna treat it a little bit like a fern. And the last plant in my room is this Hoya Carnosa tricolor. So this is very similar to the other Hoya Carnosa I have, although the leaves are a little bit lighter in color and they have this kind of nice, variegation on the sides, this cream variegation, but then they also have these really, really gorgeous pink leaves. This one is really, really gorgeous, and then this bigger one. And it's already shooting new growth off for me. I bought this plant kind of at the beginning-ish, like a month or two into quarantine from a nursery near my house. And I almost didn't buy it because I'm really cheap and I think this plant was selling for $30. And honestly for $30 I would say it's worth it just because it's such an established plant. Like I've never seen a Hoya this big in a store like trailing like this. So I'm actually really happy that I bought it. We got cut off a little bit on that last clip but now we are in my kitchen. And I just keep a couple of plants in here because it's pretty low light in this room and then I just have a few things propagating. We are currently in my kitchen. I only have a few plants in here so I'm just gonna briefly go over them. Um, this first one is a Cissus rhombifolia. I think it's referred to as a grape ivy and I really like this plant. like the creeping fig because it looks like a very woodland plant and I was very excited to find it when I did. It is extremely oddly shaped. I kind of let it go for a little too long and had to bring it back from the brink of death because I just wasn't watering it. I kind of forgot about it. It lost a lot of its stems and I think this plant does well if you sort of clip it back. This <laughs> plant is a spider plant. At the time when I bought it, I bought it with a roommate who doesn't live here anymore, but she has a cat and we quickly learned that cats love spider plants because they are basically like drugs. I think they're sort of supposed to be like an opiate for cats. 
um, and perhaps also a hallucinogenic. So he was constantly trying to knock this thing over. It's recovered since then, but I do find it kind of annoying that it still gets kind of these brown tips and I don't know if that's from the water or what. It's also not given me any babies, which is kind of the reason why I think spider plants are so cute in the first place. This is my ZZ plant. This plant, which is known to be a very, very easy, low maintenance, low watering, low light. It'll kind of handle whatever you do to it. This plant is literally sitting in like the darkest part of my house, which is back there on that shelf. In front of me is a north facing window. It's pulled very far away from the window. It still is giving me new growth. It's freaking chilling. It's doing fine. And I water this plant like once a month maybe sometimes uh, longer than that and yeah it's just doing okay it's the only plant that can live on that shelf when we put that shelf up initially I was like I'm gonna get plants like put them on here and I didn't know any better because I didn't think the plants needed that much light but they do so any plant that initially started off on that shelf has now been moved to other parts of the house because it is just too far away from a window especially a north facing window to survive but somehow this plant fine just completely fine we are now in my living room this part of my house doesn't get nearly as much light as my bedroom does so this is kind of where i stick my medium light to lower light tolerant plants this is mostly where i keep all of my ferns and also the part of my house where a lot of the plants that I tend to forget about live just because I'm not spending nearly as much time in here. Hello. So quite some time has passed since the beginning of my plant tour video. This is take three of my plant tour and these are all the plants in my living room. When I initially filmed this, all of the footage was out of focus, so I am doing this again. But quite a few weeks have passed in between that filming, but things are pretty much the same here, so we're going to get started and I'm just going to show you what I've got going on in my living room. And in no particular order, we'll start with some ferns. This is my maidenhair fern. It's a little crunchy. It's got a couple of brown fronds going on in there. This isn't the easiest care fern. I know that these ferns are very finicky. I picked it up for like $5 at a grocery store back in the fall and I haven't killed it yet. It may not be the most beautiful, but it isn't dead, which is great. And I think this was the first fern that I purchased because I'd previously been too afraid to own ferns. So I feel like if I can manage to keep this thing alive, I can do okay with some of the other ferns. Another one of my ferns is this bird's nest fern that I picked up at a nursery. I would say that the bird's nest fern is a little bit more of an easier care fern. It's a little hardier and a little more forgiving. There are a couple of brown tips on it from when I forgot to water it, but all in all I would say that it is a good fern for people who are starting out with ferns, people who like the look of ferns but don't like super high maintenance ferns, and I just love like its growth habit and the way that it really just spreads out and grows from the center. This is technically not a fern. It is referred to as an asparagus fern, and I think this is the plumosa variety of the asparagus fern. I really love it. I love how delicate it is and how um, kind of fluffy and, and poofy it is. It's very, very cute. This one also needs a decent bit of water. I don't know if that's just because it's in such a small pot. It dries out pretty quickly on my windowsill, but yeah, I just, I love the look of it a lot. And I would totally be open to owning more varieties of asparagus ferns in the future. This little guy is some sort of a relative to the Boston fern. It looks very similar to the Boston fern. This one is also suffering from a couple of um, crunchies. I got this one on 
Steve's Leaves. I love the look of a Boston fern or a very traditional looking fern. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's hanging on. I have all of my ferns kind of in the same area next to each other. And I think they're doing pretty well with the light conditions in here. So this living room has a northeast and a northwest facing window. So it's not the brightest light, but it gets some really nice light in the morning. Another fern I own is the, this heart leaf fern. And I picked this fern up somewhere in my neighborhood. I saw it outside and I thought it was so beautiful. And I did the thing that you should never do, which is buy a plant without knowing how to properly care for it. So I bought this fern, knowing it was a fern, but knowing pretty much nothing else about it. I'd never seen it before. I'd never seen anyone talk about it really just didn't know and I left it up on a shelf when I got it home for three days didn't water it didn't really check up on it and then one day I looked over at it and it was completely crunchy like it looked dead I don't know I was really freaked out because I had never had anything die on me so quickly after purchasing it so I was really worried that I wasn't going to be able to revive it and it honestly doesn't look great it's got a lot of dead stuff in there. I had to cut off a lot of the dead leaves, but after I watered it, it did sort of bounce back. So I have hope that I can, I can keep this alive, but this fern does require a very, very high amount of water. And this is one of those ferns that if you let it dry out, it will die. And it's not a very forgiving fern. Some other ferns, are forgiving in the sense that maybe they'll get a couple of brown fronds, but they won't be completely dried up. This fern is not one of those ferns. And knowing what I know now, I would not have purchased this fern. But for now, this is just sort of my experimental friend. And if it dies, it dies. This may be my favorite fern in my fern collection. This is a rabbit's foot fern. And the reason it is called a rabbit's foot fern is because it has these really amazing roots that are fuzzy and look, I guess, like rabbit's feet. Its leaves kind of remind me of like a, a carrot top or something. And I would say this fern is a little bit on the easier side, at least for me, maybe because the pot is so big, I don't have to water it nearly as much, but it's been fine. It's been doing pretty well where I have it. I just hang it, have it hanging right in front of a window and yeah, I just love it. I think it's so cute. This is a Syngonium. I don't know the exact variety of a Syngonium. Perhaps it is something berry related, but it has these pink sort of veining detail on it. And it's very, very cute. I bought it last summer. I would say this is definitely an easy care plant in the sense that it can be on the brink of death and you can absolutely bring it back. I did accidentally over water it one time and it lost a lot of its leaves and it's been recovering pretty nicely. It's also a plant that can do better in lower light situations so that's good to keep in mind and when these get bigger they kind of start to vine and yeah they're just really beautiful plants. I really really like um, syngoniums or arrowhead vines and I would actually like to have some more in my collection but this was my first other friends on the same windowsill as the Syngonium include this beautiful golden pothos. I bought this last summer for $5 and I don't think that you should buy golden pothos for more than $5. And this is also a plant that is very easy to root in water um, because it has these nodes on it, these aerial root nodes. Yeah, this plant has moved around a lot in my apartment. It's pretty adaptable to most lighting conditions. I wouldn't give it super low light, but yeah, it's just been hanging out on the windowsill. I love the look of these plants. I would actually love to have more of them in my house because I just think that they're very easy care and they look really good and I love a vining plant. This is my Marble Queen Pothos. So the difference between the pothos that I just show, showed you and the Marble Queen is that the Marble Queen kind of has more of a white marbling on the leaves. I find that it grows a little bit slower than my Golden Pothos. I don't know if it's because it requires a little more light for the marbling, 
but the variegation is very, very beautiful. I also recently moved it into the living room, and I think it's just doing a lot better in here next to the window, so I'm hoping that I will get a lot more new growth on it. This is a Dracaena marginata, which is also referred to as a dragon tree. This is the only Dracaena that I own, but I very much enjoy Dracaenas. I think they're really nice options for lower light rooms, and they're also nice big options for lower light rooms. This one, of course, is very small. The edges of the leaves have kind of a purple or pink tone, and I just like the shape of it and how kind of fluffy it is. And this plant is pretty easy care. It'll, it has like a little bit of a tree stump, so it will let you know when it wants water because it will pucker a little bit and also plants like these tend to store water in their trunks so you don't necessarily need to water them as often. This is a heartleaf philodendron that I started from cuttings from my roommate's large, very large hanging heartleaf philodendron. I probably started this from cuttings maybe a year ago. I would say I'm surprised how slowly it has grown since I started it just because I think of this plant as being a very fast growing and easy plant. But it's also the only plant that I have ever started from cuttings and had such a full pot. So I am really pleased with it and I, even though it's a little like funky looking right now, I think it'll trail really beautifully and become a nice full plant eventually. This is my snake plant. This is the only snake plant that I personally own. My roommate has quite a few around the house. She has some bigger ones. I don't know what to say. I like the look of snake plants, but I find that they don't excite me because they feel more like a sculptural element in the home than a plant, just because I can't really notice any growth on them. Maybe it's because of the way that they grow, or maybe they just grow more slowly, and maybe I'm not giving it enough light, like proper lighting conditions. I also find that this plant tends to kind of go this way or topple over a little bit and won't really sit straight, and I'm not really sure how to remedy that. I do think that they're very beautiful. I would always recommend them just because they are easier care plants, but it also sort of doesn't feel as satisfying of a plant to keep simply because it doesn't show you new growth in the way that a pothos or a philodendron or pretty much most other plants do. To me they feel more decorative than anything else. If you are a snake plant lover and you can fill me in on how to see some growth on my snake plant, let me know. I wasn't even going to show this because I hate it so much and I think it might be dead. <laughs> But this is a Hoya Carii leaf cutting. I got this from my friend who I had mentioned was moving out. At first, actually, when I got it, I thought it was some sort of cactus until I did a little bit more research and figured out it was a Hoya Carii. From what I understand, when you cut the leaf of a Hoya Carii and stick it into soil, you're solely keeping that leaf alive, grant, assuming that you water it and care for it, but there will never be any new growth because you didn't cut one of the stems or one of the areas where new growth would grow from. So this plant is just very boring to me because it doesn't do anything, and I also just feel like it's just a disservice to the plant to do that and to sell that that way. It could be dead, I don't really know. It's looking a little yellow, but maybe I should just rehome it or give it to someone that may enjoy it. This is another aglionemia whose name I cannot remember. And this was one of the first plants I bought early on in my plant journey. And I just think that I have I don't know if this is just an aglionema thing, if this is a me thing. I just think it's so ugly looking. I think it looks so bad. It's so droopy. It is has lost all of its leaves on the bottom. And I do think that that happens with aglionemas, that they, they lose the, their bottom leaves and grow up. But I just don't like the way that that looks. I think it looks bad. It's doing fine. It's putting out new growth in a couple of places. And I think that 
In general, aglaonemas are very, very beautiful plants. They're also great low light options. Initially when I had it, I had it in extremely low light and then decided to move it into here where it would get a little bit more light. I also repotted it and it just hasn't been doing that well. I lost a couple of the stems probably from the shop. I also don't know if potentially it had root rot or something, but some of the stems just came straight out of the soil after a little while. So I'm not really sure what to do about this thing. I'm sort of just keeping it around and keeping it alive and hoping maybe something will change. But if anyone has any tips, I don't, I just, I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and maybe it inspired you to get some plants of your own or move some around in your apartment. Yeah, okay, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!